In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to detect and manage the incoming keyboard input in Pygame. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of different techniques, a lot of different ways uh, in how to manage the various kinds of uh, keys because there are a lot of different keys on the keyboard. Uh, and then there's a numeric keypad as well. So I'm going to show you exactly how to detect all of these different kinds of inputs. I have a lot of content planned for this video, so let's get right into it. All right, I'm going to do this from scratch so that those of you who don't know, uh, who don't have much experience with Pygame will also be able to understand. I'm going to import Pygame here and then make a new import from pygame.locals. This is basically something I'm doing for the keyboard inputs, all right? Then I'll import sys for the sys.exit function that we'll use later. Then I'll initialize Pygame, create a display. We won't actually be using the display, but uh, I need to do it, otherwise Pygame won't begin receiving input. I'm going to pass in a tuple, 300 by 300, uh, width and height, all right? I'm going to set up the game loop. Then I'll begin checking for events. Event in pygame.events, sorry, event.get. What this does basically is returns a list of all currently occurring events, right? And then we basically cycle through them with the for loop. So check, checking for the event that we want to look for. So let's check for a quit event. The quit event is the event that occurs when we click on the X on the Pygame window. I'll show you that in a minute. So then if we detect this event, use pygame.quit and sys.exit. All right. And here we'll just update the window even though we aren't actually drawing anything to it. And let's run this. Here's our window. Oh, all right, uh, I mentioned the quit event, right? The quit event triggers when you click this button. And the window closes properly because of these two commands. All right. So now let's actually begin. Uh, the reason why I, I explain this so much is because the exact same concept applies to other uh, events, such as key presses and mouse presses. And in our case, we're doing key presses here. So pygame.keyDown is the event that we're looking for. Basically, this event triggers when you press a key. It doesn't matter which key. It just presses, it just activates whenever you press the keyboard, right? So let's further begin narrowing it down. Like, okay, a key has been pressed, but let's further begin narrowing it down. Like, okay, a key has been pressed, but which one? So let's use if event.key is equal to, uh, now, unfortunately, we're going to have to do this one by one. There's no way of uh, just magically writing one statement and somehow fig figuring out which one it was. So we'll have to check manually like this. Uh, I'll be like key A. Key A has been pressed. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this and then press A. Okay, I'm pressing A and there we go. A, I'm, I'll keep pressing it and it'll keep showing up. All right, one thing I just want you to notice, however, let me run that again, is that I'm going to hold the down A, okay? I'm going to hold it down. Now, I have it held down, but it only triggered once, all right? It is not going to re repeat continuously. Uh, you'll understand why this is important when I begin discussing uh, the other method of taking input in uh, your pie game for keys. All right, so what next? This is take a look at some other common keys, all right? I'm going to duplicate this several times. All right. So let's take a look at up, down, and obviously left and right is the same, so let's not repeat ourselves too much. And then there's also numbers. So this one, K1. I'll just change the text here. Arrow up has been pressed. It's been pressed. This is a bit tedious, but gotta do it. Arrow 
he let's go with key left on the honesty all right number one has been pressed and bear in mind that the number one on the uh, main keyboard is different and on the I mean if you have one a numeric keypad on the side right that is different so uh, I'll show you that in a minute as well all right so all right this is for the keypad the numeric keypad uh, let me just change that a bit numeric keypad numeric keypad number one has been pressed. So I just want to tell you that, that uh, there's a difference, all right? There's a difference between the one, two, three, four, five, six on the keypad and on the uh, main keyboard section. I just pressed the, the numeric keypad there. And here I just pressed the regular one button. You know, the one that's below F1. All right, and that's about it. Because, okay, actually, let me show you one more for shift and control and alt, all right? So I'll have the same method, right? Dot even dot key. And here are shift. Now there are two shifts, right? One on the left, one on the right. So there's L shift for uh, the left one and R for the right one, all right? And then there's also the R alt, all right? Uh, for right alt and left for the left one. And then one more I want to tell you is return. Return is for enter, all right? Uh, because it, you know, it's usually used to return something. That's why they call it return. And for F1 as well, you just type F1. Uh, I have a link included to uh, a, the text tutorial on our website. It basically has a list of 100 different keys. So you can take a look at all of them over there, all right? Uh, I don't expect you to memorize them all or something right now. All right, so one more thing I want to show you is basically the inverse of key down. Now, this part is a little hard to explain without some visual demonstration. So I'll just uh, get right into it, then I'll explain along the way. So I'm just going to remove all of this, all right? Then I'm going to add a new event type detection. If event type is equal to up then I'll just copy this and be like PA has been released. All right. Now let's run this. Okay, here's our window. Now I'm going to press A. All right. I'm now I'm moving my hand on it and I've pressed it. And there we go. Uh, the key down event has occurred and the message has been printed. Now I'm going to let go. And there we go. Uh, key A has been released. So basically every button, every key click has uh, two events that occur. A key down and a key up. When you uh, press it down and when you release it. Now this is pretty useful because uh, in certain scenarios you wouldn't, want the, you, you wouldn't want the event occurring until you let go of the button. Uh, again, this is up to your creativity and uh, on how you make use of this feature, all right? So before I move on to the second way of taking input in Pygame, uh, key press input, uh, I want to discuss a limitation of the current system. Due to the way the uh, for loop is set up here, we can only ever uh, look at one event at a time. So basically what this means is that we can't do, do something like event dot key is equal to key B. So uh, basically, basically what I'm trying to say here is that with this way of taking in, uh, input for key presses, we cannot uh, detect whether two keys have been pressed at the same time or not. Because again, due to this for loop, we can only ever uh, uh, you know, examine one event at a time. Because uh, basically this is a list. It will return a list of current events. And this is cycling through them one at a time because that's how a for loop works, All right? So I'm just going to delete this then. All right. And here we'll begin the second method. I gave that key dot get pressed. This is the function we'll be looking at. What this does is basically it uh, returns a list of about the same size as all the keys on the keyboard. All right. So 
It returns a 0 or a 1 value for each key. 0 if it's not pressed and 1 if it's pressed. So basically this allows us to do things like this. If pressed keys is in say ka, right? Then uh, print key a has been pressed. Alright, I'm gonna run this now and you'll see the difference between this method and the other method. I'm gonna press A now. And there you go. Uh, even though I lightly pressed it for less than a second, we got all these messages printed out. Because with this technique, it doesn't check just once. It'll basically, uh, as long as, as this game loop keeps running and as long as we have a pressed down, it'll keep running. Uh, okay, so while we're on the topic, I wanted to quickly bring in some frame rate control here. Because right now, it, the loop is you know, iterating as fast as it can. So basically, the faster your computer is, the faster this loop will be uh, executing per second. So I'm just going to create a FPS clock. FPS clock dot tick FPS. All right, so what I've done currently is uh, set this loop to uh, only iterate 30, 30 times a second. Uh, this is a bit off topic, but I just thought I'd include it. All right. Now, uh, as you can see, it's slowed down a lot because now it's only uh, happening 30 times a second instead of like a few hundred times. All right. So now the benefit with this is that we can come up with combinations like pressed keys, key B. All right. Now, previously, this didn't work, right? But we can make this work. Key A and key B has been pressed because this is a pretty continuous way of doing it. All right, I'm holding down A and now I'm going to hold down B. And there we go. We got it printed out. So when exactly to use this method and when to use the other? Well, you'll want to use this one for uh, multi-key uh, input, like when more than one key has been selected. And for the other, the other method, uh, you'll basically want to use that when you, you just want to uh, handle a single click. Like let's say you want to open up your inventory, right? So you should use uh, the, uh, the first method, all right? You just press I and something activates. Or maybe you want to attack. You just press once and, and the attack animation begins. This method is actually pretty handy for movement usually. Like in games with fluid movement like a platformer game where you're controlling or some kind of RPG fighter that you've maybe created. This is, this is uh, the kind of keyboard input used for movement. Because uh, normally, if you think about it, when you're playing games and you're moving, you don't just click once to move, right? Unless it's some kind of tile-based game or some kind of turn-based game. Usually, you just have your joystick, joystick pressed in that uh, maybe forward direction, or maybe you have the up key pressed in, in the, uh, you know, to, move, uh, in, to move up. So that's why you use these, because typically we press down or push down on the key in order to move forward. All right, so that's up to you, I guess. So. And that's the end of this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you later.